Yes, 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 a little late to this one, but it's a long album, guys. It's a long album. There's too many long albums coming out these days, isn't there? I'm okay with a long album when it really works and serves its purpose, but come on. Some of these albums, man, they don't need to be this long. Come on, too many long albums, and Future and Metro Boomin are back again with We Still Don't Trust You. Just in case you didn't believe them the first time, We Still Don't Trust You. And it's been a pretty mixed response hasn't it with this one the annoying thing about being late to this album specifically more than it is other albums is that i've kind of missed the boat on some of the shots that were fired towards drake from rocky from the weekend which then you know pushed and forced drake into responding a little bit quicker than he may have because he kind of had to get it out there and fire some shots back on the track of push-ups while also directing Kendrick Lamar so yeah a little late to all of that conversation uh, unfortunately but here we are alas the album it's um it's all right it's okay I don't know I, I feel like a lot of people are hating on this one but I, I controversially think it's better than the first one my issue with that one specifically I talked a lot about in detail on the review was that it felt like they were both kind of going through the motions not really challenging each other to push themselves to give us some of the best that we've heard them do before particularly with the beat selection I thought Metro was kind of coasting a little bit and it just forced Future into giving us a lot of kind of carbon copy flows that we've heard him do before the hooks weren't really that popping either and I just think this time around with the production kind of having a bit more of a synth pop feel to it even though it isn't entirely synth pop the whole way through there's just a little bit more synth pop ness to it that just lifts the production a little bit more just gives us a little bit more to bite onto to, to to grasp onto even with that being said though i still feel a little disappointed with this as a whole because there's some pretty bad tracks honestly i may as well get those out of the way um jealous i thought the lyrics were just kind of tacky i think future when he's in this bag it can go either way you can kind of either ignore it you can just kind of let it wash over you and focus on his flows where he sounds the beats that could be one way to do it or it really sticks out like a sore thumb and it just really kind of makes you go Ugh, love bad bitches was another track that did the exact same thing too just thought that a track was a bit tacky and then amazing as well where he's like girls kissing girls that's amazing to me and then he just lists like loads of like really stupid things and talks about how they're amazing he's very much in his toxic bag on this one and he's always been in his toxic bag but i think when he goes really overtly on the nose and really really yeah just really really trashy with the lyrics it's just a bit off-putting and there were too many moments like this on the album and those were the main ones that stood out to me as being pretty weak and just dragged dragged it down you know you're already getting huge amounts of music here so you're gonna have to really keep the quality up to make this an amazing project because otherwise it's just gonna falter and it falters a few times with that said though the falters aren't massive and there's not too many huge misses. There's just quite a few in the 25 length track list, um, <laughs> which there's going to be. I think there's just going to be when it comes to future. I think he can find a way to condense his albums and Metro obviously working on this too to just like 12 tracks. It would have been much better, I think. But that said, there's some really good st tracks on here, you know, particularly all the tracks with The Weeknd, I think, are really, really good. The opening track, it kind of sounds like Billy Jean with the beat. I'm wondering if they are trying to emulate that feel. The synths sound fantastic. It's such an intoxicating vibe, the whole thing. The the repetition of, we still don't trust you. And The Weeknd doing his singing. Oh, it sounds great. All to myself, you will never get past me with an Isley Brothers sample or an Isley Brothers the sample i also get how you say their name i don't even know amazing stuff love it i picked up on it immediately went straight to who sample and i was like you don't get past me but the weekend sounds great on here really coming through with that great call out in quite a surprising way but i guess this entire era has been focused on that again always be my fault future sounds great on this track i feel like the 
the lyrics are a little harder hitting and go a bit more emotional, which is interesting to hear. But also, The Weeknd, again, adding a really nice dynamic to the overall sound. He just adds this cinematic feel to the songs with his voice. And I actually wouldn't even mind these three just completely going all in on, a, on an album together. Like, maybe again, not 25 tracks. We don't need that, I don't think. But... You know, a 10 to 15 track album with Future, The Weeknd and Metro Boomin. I think it could be great, honestly. So I wouldn't mind hearing that at some point in the future because, like I say, they killed it on every track they all came on together here with. You know what it reminds me of, actually? It reminds me a lot of, like, Tyler's Wolf, where Frank Ocean is just popping up multiple times throughout the album. And every time he's there, it just sounds great. Or really any Tyler album where Frank features on. It just always feels like the flame ignites whenever whenever those two are on a track together and this same feeling is is, is kind of overcoming me here with the weekend popping up on these tracks because it just really works but also we've got tracks such as uh, drink and dance which just has a great beat to it future sounds awesome on this one i just absolutely love the way he's flowing on here overload which has this cody and crazy callback to it as well very intoxicating very much future just kind of at his usual sort of self going on future mode really red leather with j cole and that twin towers line <laughs> aside from that twin towers line i actually think overall he does a pretty good job he sounds really emotive on this track it really goes to show that when the beat is more interesting j cole can sound a lot better because like i said with the review of might delete later uh, when j cole is just rapping over really really stiff and stale production that sounds like it's decades old he, he just really can bore you to tears but honestly when the beats are much more interesting like on this track i'm with it i'm with it and i think the rest of this sort of section of the album is very much what i've described already you've got some really kind of toxic lyrics popping up here and there future really much in his kind of r&b lane sort of talking about women a lot on this album but when he does he can be really hit or miss with it the production i think is way more varied way more just kaleidoscopic everything just feels big the the synths and the the trap beats the hi-hats sound great on a lot of these tracks there's a lot of just a bit more like oomph to the songs, whereas I didn't really feel that on We Don't Trust You. I think We Still Don't Trust You corrects some of those issues that we got for the first time around. Then you get the seven tracks that come after it that deviate completely from the overall sound. And you've got the intro, which is really interesting too, where Charlemagne the God is doing that little interview snippet talking about how Future has influenced a generation of rappers and everywhere he goes he just comes across future clones and everybody wants to sound like him and it really shouldn't just be a big three it should be more of a fantastic four and future might not even be fourth in that list he may even be the best out of the four which i thought was interesting and something i've kind of championed myself for a little while now just for the fact that i think if we're talking about the most influential most significant rappers of our time it's never really just been the three cole kendrick and drake it has included others for quite some time but we just for some reason have excluded them off that list interesting that future feels that he needs to say that as well because he's put it on his own album so obviously he wants a bit of that hunger competitive spirit to be let out there for people to realize that i actually care about this guys i want to be part of this too and perfectly from there, you get like some absolute hard snapping mega bangers that I was just really hoping we'd get throughout this entire era of the future of Metro booming collaborations. I assume they did these tracks separately to appease the fans like me that were wanting this type of music because god damn this is just very much these two doing what they have done best for so long this reminds me of like stuff like you'd get on ds2 particularly the track nobody knows my struggle which has that repetitive hook and then the absolute like rageous like uh, rageous is that even a word that they're, they're raging beat every track after it follows it as well you've got the asap rocky feature which is kind of tongue-in-cheek and poking a bit of fun at drake again it's a little bit of a silly line in there where he says about how his last album came and went i'm not sure we could ever say that about any drake album honestly i don't think any of his albums ever just come and go um even if maybe the longevity in the long run will you know die off and fade away which i still think might happen with some of drake's albums to be honest with you but in this current time period 
they're always getting huge numbers. They're always streaming like crazy. Like, I think he probably could have come up with something a bit harsher to say than that. But yeah, I mean, this seven track section is just totally different to the rest of this. It almost feels like its own thing, but I do think it technically counts as all part of one album. So I think it's worth bringing all those tracks up because I really, really enjoyed those and just gave me that kind of like monster era future that I was looking for and Metro just on his A game with the really, really hard hitting production too. But is that enough to save this album as a whole? Well, I mean, I say that. I think the album's actually pretty decent. I'm not really going to go head over heels or die on a hill for it because I do think it has quite a few issues. But for 25 tracks, I think the overall ratio is more good to bad than than there is really. Like, there's not too many bad moments, but there's a lot of good moments. The main thing I want to say, though, is that this era had far more potential than it's ended up showing us. I think, unfortunately, with time passing, we're probably going to remember this era for the takedown of Drake or the the explosion of the rap game kind of hitting this peak where suddenly of years and years and years of shots being fired, subliminals being said, we finally get the big, big moment of Drake versus Kendrick, which we got on Like That. I think when time passes, we'll probably just remember this for that. And obviously everyone else coming for Drake too. But in terms of the quality of the albums, yeah, I think they could have been a lot better. I mean, I think they could have been more explosive. They could have had more of a of an excitement to them. I think they all could have, they both could have followed the same path that the seven tracks that you know finish off this album did but unfortunately we don't get that the whole way through it's just a lot of missed potential and while i do think we still don't trust you i personally prefer to we don't trust you like i say i'm not going to be like returning to this in full really in the future it's just a decent six out of ten album like it, it should be far better than this it should be far greater than this and i personally just think it's a little bit of a shame that we didn't quite get the quality that we know that these two can produce at such a high level throughout the, both of the projects. But I've got to say, I've, I've loved living through this. Like it's been so exciting to see it all unfold. And it really is all down to Future and Metro Boomin. They created what is going on right now. As of recording this video, it's still going. We don't know if Kendrick will respond. He may do. But it is down to them for creating it, so you can't knock it, man. It is really, really great that they came together and did this. And overall, we did get quite a lot of bangers from it too. So yeah, for me personally, I'm not absolutely head over heels, but I'm still on board with this album to a decent extent. Let me know your thoughts though, if you agree with me or disagree with me. Um, what do you think is the best album out of the two? I think I'm slightly in the minority here with this one being better than the other. But, you know, there's not a huge quality gap between them, really. Let me know your thoughts, though. Subscribe, check out my Patreon as well. Have a good day and goodbye.